Hey, happy today, happy every day. You are listening to Bonnie and Clyde, except Bonnie has taken the week off, so Clyde has a special guest on the show today, and it is our California State, ranked both fifth and sixth for California, wrestler, who I'm envisioning is going to take us to the gold in 2024 Olympics. <laughs> Uh, his name is Josh Fuentes, and he is actually here to talk with me today for about 10-15 minutes and tell us about how he's doing with his brain, body, being, and how he's having a happy today and a happy every day. Yeah, so uh, brain, body, and what was that? Being. And being. Okay, so brain, just uh, doing homework and all that. Nothing crazy, actually. Maybe to stimulate my brain is just uh, practicing ukulele, uh, watching a lot of wrestling videos, trying to sharpen my technique uh, other than that i'm not really super interested in like what i'm learning in school so it's kind of just going out the other ear um body mm, I stretch a lot wrestle a lot lift it's kind of body takes a big toll so i'm trying to do better with that icing more stretching heat and all that but uh not just living a regular like athletic life i guess except as a wrestler and then being like what how would you how would you describe that being thankful and grateful for what you already have so far oh yeah i'm very thankful like it's so crazy that, I, that i'm able to be an athlete at like at a university it's like it's so surreal like i never saw myself doing this like especially before jc because I, I wasn't going to school prior to that like after high school I was just working and i decided to jump back in and here i am now at sfsu which is san francisco state and, and i told you to protect your body from the like like because right now you're red shirting which means mm -hmm. that you're kind of chilling so you don't want to go all out and really hurt yourself but you want to just do what you can do and then get better for the future because you can I've I have friends who are professional athletes and their bodies go body bodies go when you're an athlete yeah so it's a matter of balancing that mm -hmm. yeah well thankfully I haven't gotten like injured seriously just like uh maybe like hurt my neck a little hurt my knee but no no tears no surgery like I'm so thankful for that so we're I'm good I'm not I'm not like freaking crazy where i'm willing to tear something but um i mean i'll do what i gotta do to win what do you think you gotta do to strengthen your spine and your like neck <sighs> shit well that's a tough one it's um because your neck is always going to get hurt in wrestling it's kind of um just uh like pushing your neck to the side is like the best way i guess like uh like strengthening you I mean your neck only flexes like like <laughs> left right up and down so it's you know just kind of like put weight on it and then work it out that's the best you can do stretch a lot ice and heat uh, pretty much the basics like what would you tell someone like how would you strengthen a bicep or something like that my spine is pretty strong and like even after i haven't done bikram yoga for over a month like i could still feel my muscles mm -hmm. from the past five years of doing it so it's like you just build that strength and muscle memory right yeah but uh, you've been wrestling long enough to have some muscle memory mm -hmm. uh the spine thing oh i don't know i haven't had really a problem with my spine uh, maybe my lower back is a little sore sometimes but no nah, no no complaints with my bones at all yeah i'm, I'm pretty good with that but uh yoga does help a lot uh man when i tried bikram for the first time it was crazy like like i i've done hot yoga or, well i've done hot yoga once and i remember that it kind of sucked because man it's freaking hot and then i did it again i was like oh what am i doing here again but uh, it was great like i felt great after i felt a lot stronger a lot a lot more flexible uh, it's like definitely out of my comfort zone like being in these poses where they're very, very difficult and painful and then like not only that it's like you're trying not to break from the heat and uh like just keeping your breath because uh sometimes you just suffocate a little in there but uh everything's good though was the second time the time that I had you come? Yeah, actually it was. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man. You did so awesome. Thank you. I was like, oh, my God, you just rocked it in yeah. here. You did. I was trying to impress everyone. I was like, all right, I got I to gotta show out. <laughs> I'm a wrestler. <laughs> I can't. But, uh, yeah, it worked out. But there was another new girl that did great there, too. And I was like, man, she did. She outdid you? Yeah, I think so. Because uh, no, guys... like, every time I'd, like, take a break or I'd break a pose, I'm like, fuck, she's doing it. Yeah, yeah. The, po the point is to breathe, and the poses are just the decoration. Yeah, okay. well, it was hard. <laughs> like, breathing in there was, it was just hard because it was hot, but uh, we're good, though. It was, it was fun. But that's the point. It's to train you to breathe through the nose so that when you're in a situation that's uncomfortable, you can not, instead of, like, 
hyperventilate, breathing through the mouth, you train yourself to breathe through your nose through really hard times. Huh, okay. And that helps you in other parts of your life. You know, breathing yeah, that, through your nose. Especially since, like, <laughs> yoga is a lot harder than most things. That really would help a lot. Now that I think of it, wow, it is a lot of breathing, huh? I should really think about this. Something stressful is coming up, breathe through my nose. Calm down and all that. I mean, how'd you beat that guy from Ohio? Because he was, like, a top-ranked... Oh, he was a, so that was a tough, so, yeah, so the kid from Ohio, so uh, Ohio right now is like the number two school in the nation for D1 wrestling, and the SFU, uh, SFSU just recruited him, like this guy, at my weight to come in, and I was like, damn, like, am I going to have a spot, or am I even going to be on the team this year? So I was like, I took it kind of personal, I was like, alright, I got to kick this guy's ass, and then the <laughs> JC where I'm from is not a joke, my coach is a... He's an Olympic, like, he was on a team with three Olympic gold medalists, and this is, like, Oklahoma State, so this is, like, we, he ran the, he ran me, like, wrestled me super hard, like, he did not care, he was just straight old school, just, like, take him down, let him up, nothing fancy, and so I just kind of applied that to him, I know he didn't run as much as me for sure, because I ran, I ran so much every day. So I was just like, even if my technique isn't great, or my strength, I know I, I can gas somebody out, so, like, like in wrestling, or I, I'm pretty sure in any sport, if you make someone tired, they, they are not the same person, and it's so easy to just like. And when you're when you have energy, it makes it so fun to just beat him up. And so, um, since I knew that uh, his gas tank was as great as mine, I just kept shooting and shooting and pushing him, and like making sure I wasn't in crazy position. And I'm pretty good too. Like it's not like my technique or strength is that bad, but uh, he's he's a rip kid. He's he's been wrestling since he was like what like five, and I've been wrestling since I was like 15. So he has years under his belt. So I just kept pushing him. I caught, I caught him on a takedown. And I think that's what broke him. Because uh, when you get taken down, maybe in like the, the last period of the match, it's like you kind of have, you feel like you don't have hope getting back up. So then I was able to put him on his back. And in wrestling, when you put him on your back, you kind of win. Mental game. Yeah, so it's a big mental game too. It's just wrestling is just crazy. So yeah, that's, that's how I beat him. Just broke him with that one takedown. Kept good position. But uh, it kind of sucks like, that I'm a red shirt. So I don't get the, I don't get the spot. And a red shirt is, is just taking an extra season to just get better. So I couldn't represent the team. But uh, next year, for sure, I'm going to pop out. You have a great potential future ahead of you on the national team. and Yeah, for the, so the national team thing, it's not for the USA, but it's for the Philippines. So it's pretty good. But, man, there's some crazy guys out there in Asia. Like, Japan is a Japan is smaller than California, but they have a freaking world team that competes with Russia and Iran, and they beat America. So, like, they're... Like I'm just, uh, I'm, I was able to get the spot because the you know, Philippines is still a developing country and all that, so it's a good opportunity for me to be on the like the international level. Take your opportunities where you can get them. Yeah, for sure. It's funny. Like my coach likes to use people to not use people, but as a we have like a lot of ethnic kids on our team. So if you're from a certain place, he'll try to qualify you for that team so we can go visit the country. It's so funny. <laughs> It's just taking taking advantage of the opportunity. Yeah, it's perfect. It's great. Like it's so it's so funny though. It's just I've never had a team. I haven't been on a team like this where I've been able to travel this much. So really thankful for that too. It's like I was able to go to Montana. It's like now that I'm wrestling at a university, we get to travel a lot. So it's cool. And you're keeping your grades up. Yeah, that's a big struggle because it's like man, there's it's like what is it every day? Like three days a week we lift, and then we have practice every day. So it's. Like the time that I have, the, the a little time I have that's free to myself, I have to use it for homework and like studying. Because if I don't, oh my god, I'm so tired, and it's like not really much I can do, and I stress out if I go party. So the life of a wrestler is just like, man, it's, it's cool. It's yeah. a it's a life of a student athlete, yeah, and student that's athlete. why I advocate. I advocate kids going to college with something else like being an athlete or some oh, yeah, other extracurricular sure. thing because that helps keep them in line from all the partying and all whatever they could do to really sabotage themselves mm-hmm. earlier i mean you could sabotage yourself after college and <laughs> after you're injured and you can't play uh, re- you can't wrestle anymore yeah. you can sabotage after but like while you're still good like keep yourself as good as possible mm-hmm. as great as possible yeah it, it makes me pretty sad to see like kids who go to college and they just fail or they just I don't know, get on drugs or just drink too much or just mess up their life because it's like man like you had all this free time while I was while I was not when I was not studying and you couldn't just do your homework like was it that bad but it is in that free time that that's where they get lo- yeah, like lost so bad yeah so I, I was a college athlete and it kept me in line and I actually read studies later that said yeah college athletes do keep their stuff in order because they're so busy that they have to unlike some other 
you know, students who don't have other things going for them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. They have the freedom being away from their parents. Yeah. And then it's like, what can I do? Party! So bad. And they have, and now that they have, like, money, that is just a little money they saved up and they use it all on weed and drinking and just, and since it's college, like, you're away from home and you can do something every day. So, it's so bad. Yeah. But uh, I'm good, though. I'm not too crazy. I'll party every now and then. Uh, congr- but, uh, yeah. I'll uh, congratulate you because you chose to not go to Asia and stay to do well on your finals, which was, it was a, it was a smart choice, I guess. Yeah. So, ch- yeah, we didn't mention the SEA Games yet, huh? So, see, the SEA Games were supposed to be December 12th and 13th. Man, I really wanted to go because I feel like I would have meddled, but, uh. Yeah, I was during finals week, so a lot of stress on my mind. I was like, man, I got to finals. I want to do all this, this, and that. But, yeah, you got to choose wisely. You chose school at the mm-hmm. time, which is fine because you could have went there and got hurt, and then your wrestling career could have been over. Yeah, that would have really Because you might have been stressed while you're focusing, while you're trying to wrestle there. You could have been not focused because you would have been worried about your grades that you could have got hurt while you were there. And then, you know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. yeah, just you did the right thing. Just go with what you feel is right. You got time. Yeah. I got like two more years of eligibility after this year, so for college, for you wrestling, yeah, for and college then wrestling. Pro is different. And pro is, um, you just got to qualify for the Olympics. There's nothing after that. That's why wrestling is so hard. Like, if you wanted to do anything after college, you have to be the freaking best at your weight. You there's like leave no doubts, and there are so many good people nowadays, and the matchups are just crazy. So uh, we'll see what happens. You later got a business life. degree too, so you're all set. So yeah. it doesn't if if the if the greatness in your physical ability, your mental will be good because you'll have business degree and business mm-hmm. and also the discipline that you're learning from do the sport is going to help you in business. Uh huh. So yeah, I got to take advantage of that. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do with my business degree. So I'm just kind of going through the motions, going to school, and then try my best for wrestling well the world's gonna be different so two three five years after you graduate whatever whatever business changes technology changes all that stuff changes so it's just a matter of study finish your degree learn the discipline get the discipline the discipline that you're getting from being an athlete is going to help you in the discipline that you need for whatever business is going to unfold for mm-hmm. you so ride that athletic wave as long as you can yeah i definitely will it's nice oh, about it. <laughs> I don't know what to think now. It's just uh, you got to drop weight right now, right? Oh yeah, that's a that's a tough one. Like on the let me see, a week from now or so, I have to cut like a good ten pounds. So fumble, yeah. And could you even wrestle at an even lower lower weight? To I could. Be at an advantage. Uh, actually, I'm supposed to go the weight under. So right now I'm wrestling 141s, and I weigh like 150, 152. And next year, the coaches wanted me to go 133 pounds. So it's like, oh, God, I'm so fat right now. I'm like 17 pounds you're over. You're not, but, like, I know I know what you're saying. Yeah, and it's, it's so stressful. But uh, I, I can do it. Early, if you wrestled at 133, you would probably dominate. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'll be pretty good because I'll be a tall 33-pounder. And uh, uh, last, uh, this year, actually, for the state meet when I was in JC still, uh, was that, like, literally, yeah, exactly a year ago, I weighed – like 136 so i could make it it's just it's just a matter of like eating not eating comfortably anymore because you were noodles yeah because <laughs> no. uh what's it called uh this year since i knew i was a red shirt i was just been going just been really loose with my diet just eating what i want being happy <laughs> but that definitely helps so much because uh a lot of people the reason why they don't do so good in wrestling or like they just quit is because of the cutting it's it's like it's so it's so much on your mental like like if you don't know what cutting is so let's say your competition is the next morning. You cannot eat or drink water if you are exactly on weight. Like if you weigh 133 pounds flat, you cannot drink or eat. You have to just tough it out and go to sleep. And then the next morning you weigh in and you have two hours to rehydrate and warm up. And then you're you're thrown into the cage. You well, better be like 132.9 or less. Yeah. Like, right. so, and it sucks. It's like trying to sleep hungry and so thirsty is horrible. Horrible. Well, and then, that's why that Tibetan meditation class you took was supposed to help you this yeah. last semester. <laughs> well, <laughs> meditate yourself to sleep. Nah, that's a tough one. It's like you can do whatever you can. It's just I don't know. Being thirsty sucks at night, uh, but you get through it. Uh, I think the worst thing that like the hardest part about going to sleep when you're cutting is like when you travel because um, like the hotels is a whole different place. Like you're not used to that bed, so you're just like rolling around, just like man, I'm like oh. and then you got the whole resting thing on your mind. It's, it's tough, but uh, you get through it. Just trying to keep a good mentality about it. And I'm not trying to be like, oh, it's hurt. Like, 
it's uh, making me sad. I'm trying to be, oh, I'm gonna kick this guy's ass. I gotta fix. I'm just trying to fix my mentality with it. Yeah. What's the best thing that you feel about wrestling and your experience and uh, the meaning that it brings to your life? Uh, just the fact that it keeps me like straight. Like, oh my goodness, if I wasn't wrestling, I'd probably be doing, I don't know, just smoking weed or drinking a lot and just lo- being a loser. Like, I not a loser. Discipline. Like, it gives you the discipline. Yeah, it gives it gives me great discipline. The opportunities it did, like, to bring me to the school. Um, like being fit for sure. I I like having my body and I'm uh. Uh, just uh, like when, when you can tell people you're in wrestling is cool. Yeah. It was cool when we met. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I know that like even cutting is does sound horrible. It's I think it's good for you. Fasting. Cause, uh, yeah, I do that too. Yeah. Oh, I I've, I've ta- might have talked about it in the podcast before, but yeah. Because mm-hmm, yeah, a lot of people nowadays eat a lot of meat. And, uh, we just, don't have to eat every day. Yeah, like, we don't have to eat every day. Like the, oh, there's a lot of practices where like I don't know why it's like for uh, or it's like enforced when you're a kid to eat three times a day. It's like it's fine to not eat. Like it, people don't realize that. And you it, don't. It, you right. feel better. It cleans your body. And uh, yeah, pretty much. There's our piece because we're at time. Okay. That was happy fun. today. Happy every day. Happy today. Happy every day. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having. Thank you for being on our show. <laughs> Say hi to Bonnie. Hey, Bonnie. I don't mean to steal your limelight. (laughs) (laughs) Happy today. Happy every day.